Hello, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Spearfishing Best Practices to Defeat Evolving Attacks. I'm Amber Noble, a Marketing Specialist at Barracuda MSP, and I'm happy to be moderating today's session. Today, I'm joined by Jane Haggard, Partner Success Program Training Manager here at Barracuda MSP. During today's educational webinar, Jane will walk us through an analysis of evolving spearfishing attacks and how the right combination of technology and user security training can provide the critical defenses needed to protect your customers. Before we get started, let's do some brief housekeeping. During the webinar, if you have any questions, feel free to share them using the questions or chat panel to the right of the Zoom webinar screen. At the conclusion of the webinar, you'll be prompted to complete a brief polling survey. Please take a moment to tell us what you think so we can continually improve the content and quality of our online events. Now, without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to Jane to begin today's presentation. Take it away, Jane. Thank you, Amber. The primary focus of this webinar is email protection. One question that I want you to think about is, are you securing more than just the gateway? If you haven't experienced it already, email-borne risks are an existential threat that is targeted towards your customer's network, users, and data. However, it's not surprising that email is one of the main forms of threat. Hackers are aware of how much we use and communicate through our email. Hackers target email as a way to get inside your customer's organization or to get into their account. Hackers will send malicious emails throughout organizations and demand requests. One of the most common demands the hacker will ask end users is to wire money. Barracuda has invested heavily into email security. Not only do we implement it, but we also educate our MSP partners and our employees. Earlier this year, Barracuda published a phishing attack report that specifically looked at the various types of phishing, e phishing attacks. The report analyzes how these emails could have bypassed a traditional email security system. Phishing attacks very often do not show any signs of maliciousness and are able to sneak through any spam protection that is implemented. Barracuda researchers evaluated more than 360,000 fear phishing emails in a three month period, identifying and analyzing the major types of attacks. This number captured many phishing emails bypassing the gateway but, and were blocked. Next, we're gonna have a question on what are the most common attack types you are seeing? Great, thank you for answering those. When we look at phishing attacks, we define them into three categories. The three main groups that we identify are shown in the chart here. The biggest category is brand impersonation. As you can see, 83% are brand impersonation hacks. What I mean by that is a spear phishing attack brands like Microsoft, Office 365, Chase Bank, FedEx, UPS, specifically, any well-known brand that you might interact with on a regular basis. The second largest one is blackmail. This is something we haven't talked about a lot, but it's actually a very large threat to a lot of organizations. There are also, these are also known as extortion attacks. This is where hackers pretend to have access to individual accounts and send blackmail to the victims asking for ransom, or they release some uh, compromising videos or images. To the victim, they believe the attacker has access to their content, uh, contact list or email account. What is interesting is that individuals are more likely to receive a blackmail attack than a business email compromise attack. Finally, business email compromise. 
Many do not know what this is. This is a very tricky hack to block, stop, and detect. Usually, this is when the hacker will pretend to be an employee or someone at the organization that has higher authority. Most of the time, they will ask for sensitive information, a wire transfer or a purchase, a, gift, a set of gift cards, then send the information over. Often, they are looking for a quick money. The majority of attacks we saw most often were people impersonating someone else. Although the business email compromise seems to be a small share of this pie chart at 6% of all the, the attacks, they do cause a lot of damage. In 2016, nearly $12 billion was reported in association to business email compromise. Now let's take a deep dive into brand impersonation. When we look at brand impersonation, we analyze a lot of different brands. Here is a little snapshot of what we found. These are the top three brand impersonations. In our analysis of the top 10 brands that are impersonated, what we found is that 32% of the customers reported tend to use Microsoft. It could be Microsoft, it could be Office 365, or it could be other brands associated with Microsoft. It's usually between those two. Follow closely is Apple, and then finally, DocuSign. These are probably not very surprising to a lot of you because these are the ones you would expect to be impersonated. The hacker will send an email that looks like it's coming from Microsoft. Then the email will ask you to log in with your credentials. Most of the time, those emails will include some type of link. DocuSign will ask you to open the link or some type of attachment that will lead you to another site, or you can have some content within that. Here is an example of what an Office 365 attack might look like. First, you receive an email that looks like it's coming from an Office 365 account. The email will tell you that Office 365 received some strange activity on your account. The email will ask you to please review this recent activity and most likely will require some type of action. When you click on the link, you'll end up on a website that looks very familiar. This is exactly what, Office, what Microsoft Office 365 looks like. Next, you log on to your account with your credentials. Hackers often are very smart. They will instantly refresh the page and send you to the actual website. The hacker will send you to the legitimate page for Office 365 so it appears that you, did, that you did something wrong or you could have mistyped your login information. So you'll never realize that you are being hacked. These hacks are super common now, whether it's logging into a new Wi-Fi or with all the multi-credentials people are putting into place, which are very helpful. We're often getting messages like this where you need to validate your username and password over and over again. You need to pay attention to whether this is a legitimate request or not. Why is it that these emails actually get through your gateway? Well, if you look at the credentials, there are no signs of hackers. There is a link included leading to a landing page or a login page. In this uh, specific example, the hacker includes a good website that your URL protection will assume that this, is web, this web page is something you can definitely visit. However, there are a number of signs that will tell that this is a spear phishing attack. There is a strange email with the contact information. The landing page is unusual, and the actual address is not the one that usually is used by Microsoft. There are a number of reasons why hackers are looking to steal credentials. The number one reason, of course, is to take over your customer's account. Hackers find it very valuable to take over accounts because they are able to launch attacks from those compromised accounts within the organization. Once the hacker has access, they are able to compromise accounts throughout the organization. They can then take the credentials of the company's employees and sell them on the dark web. The attack does not have to happen right away. Often hackers will hold on to the information and complete the hack later on. 
The accounts takeover is where the compromised credentials will be used. More often, the hackers don't usually start the attack right away. More frequently, hackers will sit on the account and spend a lot of time in the reconnaissance stage. Hackers will analyze the company and figure out who has access to what and what each employee is responsible for. Hackers will also analyze what deals are in flight and what languages are being used within the organization and how the company communicates with their employees. Hackers will also watch how each employee signs onto their email. During the harvest credential stage, hackers will launch numerous internal attacks while trying to steal other employees' accounts that might be more of a value. Finally, hackers will monetize the attack. They will demand the wire transfer. They will target their customers, partners, and vendors. Hackers will attack anyone they feel the company has a trusted relationship with. To prevent, an attack, uh, to prevent an account takeover, the first thing, of course, is to ensure that you are able to block phishing attacks, also known as the infiltration stage. These attacks come from well-known brands that I mentioned a few slides back. A lot of these emails will use zero-day links. These links have never been used before, and because of that, the URL within your gateway may not be able to determine if it is a malicious link. As an MSP, you will need to take appropriate steps beyond the traditional gateway and be able to notice when the link is a zero-day link. There are different ways to detect uh, during the reconnaissance or the harvest credential stage. As their IT service provider, you'll need to have technology in place to help you monitor the various sign-ins. Hackers will also set up rules to alter inbox forwarding. Often they have the email sent to forward to their own account. We have seen that hackers will have a rule in place that may that any email with invoice mentioned throughout the email will be forwarded to their personal account. This allows the hackers to monitor invoices as they come in allowing the hackers to change the account information and modify the money wire to some other place instead, most often to their own personal account. The monetization stage is where the hackers will launch the internal and external attacks. For your safety, you should provide a technology that supplies malware and stops any form of phishing attack. Finally, you need to make sure that any accounts that have have been compromised, have been notified. And finally, you'd want to have implemented some form of technology to place the stop in place to stop the hackers from compromising your customer's account, which could result in a large fraud case. Moving on to business email compromise. Often these emails will state that there is an urgent request and requires the employee to wire money. Typically, it will look like the email is from an executive or someone who has authority with an organization. The hackers use Gmail or Yahoo email accounts to get through the gateways. They use these two companies because they are very well known and very well known email domains. In fact, nearly one in three business compromise attacks are launched from a Gmail account. Often, hackers will open a Gmail account and spam a large amount of people and then move on to the next account. Even if the Gmail gets blacklisted or closed, the hack is able to open another account. It is difficult to determine where these attacks are coming from. Here's an example of a wire fraud attack. A typical wire fraud attack appears to be sent from an executive of the individual company. These attacks often get blocked. Most of these attacks are very specific, have very specific headers. Nearly 70% of these headers will include urgent or request, something that will establish a relationship between two customers and require some form of action. Hackers can also go with the approach of putting re or re before the email, which makes it look like they are replying to an email from before. This will make the employee trust the email, especially when it's coming from a manager. 
Often this hack is most successful on mobile devices because the employees are more likely to respond quickly. Some signs to look out for when receiving an email like this is, does the email address match your employee? Why is there a sense of urgency via the email? Often the sense of urgency is pushed upon the employee because the hacker wants the employee to rush their decision. The most common business email compromise technique used is domain and display name spoofing. This is where the hackers pretend to be executives. The urgency is to rush the conversation, decision, and required action. The compromise accounts typically come from high reputable senders like Gmail and Yahoo. DMARC is where you'll want reporting and enforcement to be in place to help with the spoofing. This will allow the company to monitor who is using the domain or email and how they are using it. Implementing and enforcing end user security awareness training will make sure the employees are educated and trained to recognize the signs of a business email compromise and what to look for. There is also a technology component to this, one being an internal communication protection. Internal communication protection will protect and filter some spam emails from getting through the gateway. Gateways can detect ransomware, spam, and large-scale phishing attacks. However, when it comes to business email compromise, it is recommended to have an AI detection in place. This will detect the content, context of your email and how you communicate within your customer's organization to make the decision whether something is malicious or not. Above is an example. Oh, before we uh, go on, I'm actually going to ask another question here. So the next question is going to be, how are you currently protecting your customers? Great, thank you for um, answering that. So above is an example of traditional gateway. As you can see, a lot of information is exchanged. As an MSP, you'll need to have visibility into the internal communications beyond the gateway. This will allow you and your team to monitor who is talking to who and what kind of communication is taking place during the workday. When your end users are exchanging emails internally, you're able to analyze who, are, who they're talking to, what kind of links are sent usually, and what is forwarded. Context-aware technology allows you to monitor what email address is being used and a million other signals that are normal for your customer. If something is sent to an individual that is unusual, that is a red flag. AI is able to detect the problem. AI is able to learn the unique communication patterns and diagnose when something is wrong. AI is also able to analyze those who usually talk and those who never talk, especially when there is unusual requests. Emails that contain W2 forms, wire transfers, and social security numbers that have never been shared by email will often be red flags. AI will recognize the activity as being abnormal and as a result, flag the email as a phishing attack. The same can be done for emails that are being received from outside the organization. The final phishing attack that I'll go into detail is blackmail. Although blackmail is not new, we see this most commonly. Most of the time, these emails and passwords are outdated from data breaches. 
hackers will use a spoofing technique, which actually looks like you're receiving an email from yourself. The hackers usually will include a ransom of a few hundred or a couple of thousand dollars. They never will ask for an unreasonable amount of money. The hackers will ask for a wire transfer through Bitcoin, Western Union, or something that is harder to trace. The employees or customers will get nervous or embarrassed and will send the money. Often this is targeted towards older employees. This attack continues to be very successful. This is an example of what a blackmail attack might look like. We see this type of attack most frequently. Often the employees are embarrassed to re report a situation to their IT team. Blackmail emails often do not have any links attached to them. They require the employees to complete the action somewhere else, which makes it difficult to trace these forms of attack. Today, inbound email goes through a number of filters that make up your email security solution. They include checking reputation of the domain or sender, uh, relying on blacklists. These also include content filters, looking for spam or malware. Your email security may even use techniques like URL protection to detect malicious uh, links or heuristic analysis to identify malicious content with the email. ATP features, which are now standard for most email security, will do a great job of protecting your customers against zero-day attacks. Gateways only see email that come from external senders and have no visibility into internal communication. This makes it impossible for them to identify internal attacks launched from compromised accounts. They rely on static rules designed to identify malicious emails. These techniques are not effective against socially engineered attacks that are designed to, go, uh, uh, to bypass gateways. They carry no malicious payload, originate from high reputation senders, and use carefully designed impersonation techniques to trick their victims. To the traditional security gateway, these attacks will look like legitimate emails. So the big question, how to protect your customers? Gateways are absolutely necessary. You can rely on traditional security. Hackers are very smart. Let me just correct myself. I was meant to say you cannot rely on traditional security. <laughs> um, hackers are very smart and continue to get smarter. They are able to bypass those different forms of email security. As an IT service provider, I recommend implementing another form of technology to block these attacks. You can recall that earlier in this webinar, we discussed the numbers. Account takeover is one of the fastest growing attacks. They are way more successful than setting up um, a Gmail account. DMARC can be confusing. AI helps and allows you to see who is using your uh, customer's email domain. As a company, we are able to identify who is legitimate and not. Hackers will not be able to spoof your email if you have this in place. Train your staff, educate them, and make sure they understand the various attacks. Conduct proactive investigations which can be done using tools through delivered mail. Office 365 is being impersonated all the time, which allows you to search through delivered mail to find hacks. So what does a modern email protection staff look like? It all starts with the mailbox. Whether you're on a cloud service like Office 365 or G Suite, on-prem or hybrid configuration, the defenses are the same. The gateway is as important as ever, so make sure you have inbound and outbound security deployed, including traditional signature defenses and advanced techniques like sandboxing. Secure your customers against accidental and malicious data loss with encryption and DLP and archive important emails for uh, compliance and or storage reasons. On top of that, ensure resiliency with backup to recover from accidental or malicious deletion of data and continuity service to ensure that critical emails can get sent during an outage. To stop attacks that bypass the gateway, artificial intelligence can predict how likely an email is to be to or from the person it purports to be from. DMARC standard is useful. 
to make sure that bad actors aren't sending spam and phishing attacks using your domain and brand. Account takeover is an emerging problem where legitimate accounts are taken over and used to spread bad things. We stop those too. As the last line of defense against email that comes in through personal accounts, it's critical to turn your end users from a liability into a control. Phishing simulation and training help everyone resilient. Finally, forensics and incident uh, response automates incident response and provides remediation options to address issues faster and more efficiently. Admins can send alerts, quarantine malicious emails, and use threat insights for proactive threat detection. Finally, in fact, we've built our product portfolios to support the layered approach to security. Essential provides gateway defenses and resiliency. Sentinel stops brand hijacking and catches social engineering attacks using artificial intelligence. Managed Fish Line provides the last line of defense, training your end users to spot and thwart phishing attacks on unsecured personal accounts. The approach is totally modular, letting you layer in defense where you need a boost depending on your customer's requirements or use all three components for the ultimate in protection. Above are links that can be used to start implementing the best practice for you and your company. As mentioned prior in our webinar, the phishing report download is also available. We also have included a threat scanner. So thank you for listening, and I'll turn this back to Amber. Thanks so much, Jane. I'm just going to go ahead and launch that poll I had mentioned at the beginning. Thank you, everybody who's been taking part in the polls so far. It really helps us to get feedback and to know, you know, how much our statistics are really matching up with you, the people that are actually watching our webinars. So let me get that poll launched for you right now. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to our previous slide so people can see those links again, and I will put the links in the chat panel as well. Uh, if you have any questions that you did not get a chance to ask yet, or have any questions that were not yet answered, uh, just hang on a quick minute. We, uh, we see some coming into the chat panel, but by all means, put other questions if you have them into the chat or question panels, and we'll get to them in just a moment. Okay, thank you guys for answering our poll, and we'll get to a few questions just now. Um, so let me uh, start off with uh, Sentinel, which we are really talking about uh, as part of the package here, um, is only available for Office 365. Um, if you're not on Office 365, then we would suggest having um, advanced threat uh, protection, which come, uh, which you can get with the essential um, there, and uh, so that uh, when emails come in, at least we can uh, put them into a sandbox situation and, and see what's going on with them. Uh, unfortunately, it is just for Office 365 right now. Um, let me just take a look at some of the other questions. So a lot of times clients receive emails where the from envelope uh, field is a legitimate address that was sent from a server that is not from the client. Um, so this is uh, one of us, um, what, what we are proposing is that with Sentinel, um, and of course you have to have Office 365, this would be able to detect that, detect that it is not uh, coming from the legitimate person that you think it is. Um, 
uh, having just essentials by itself, uh, unfortunately, that uh, doesn't um, would probably get through your your uh, gateway there. So is there any way for Barracuda Essentials to block quarantine impersonation attacks type email based on the contents of the message instead of just relying on the sending email address and link detection? Um, so this is so it's not just essentials, it would we would we would actually need um, Sentinel as well for that because Sentinel would be the one that would be able to detect um, the content of the message. Uh, which um, we are unable to do on just essentials itself. Anyone have any other questions? Oh, I've got some more down here. Um, I think for uh, uh, questions that are related to um, more sales questions, I probably I will pass this on to a um, sales rep to get back to you. Anything else that we need? Okay, uh, it looks like we got most of the questions answered. Again, if your question was not answered, we do have a log of your question and we'll be sure to get back to you on that, especially that one specific one on uh, return on interest. Uh, I do see that. So thank you guys very much for joining us here today to talk about spear fishing and uh, learn about you know the different products we have here and uh, have a wonderful